It was so bad that it made him shave his head. And then Dutash, right, within a year, brought him to this, where he has, like, a sick... What is this? Even a quiff? Like, a comb-over thing? Like, I don't even know what you call it, but it looks hella good. What's up, guys? Derek, moreplates18.com. Today, we are going to be talking about a pretty substantial hair loss reversal. This is... Um, sometimes I get messages from guys, you know, trying to, uh, give back to the community in some way, if they have a successful transformation, oftentimes when guys have successful transformations, they might, they might leave a comment on my YouTube channel or in my Instagram DMs and say like, thank you so much for helping me and blah, blah, blah. And that's awesome. Like I love seeing that stuff. And, uh, but sometimes people actually will come out of the woodwork and say like, literally if this helps somebody, here's my transformation, here's the actual pharmacology I took in order to do it. And um, those are really insightful because they help me make uh, videos too about that stuff so that I can show you guys like this is what I'm talking about equates to in a real life um, example. So this is, uh, you know, in infrequently or I guess, you know, depending on how much you like or dislike hair loss content, it may come, it may seem like it's frequently, I'll post transformations on this channel of uh, different kinds of stacks to see kind of give you an example of what you can expect, how long it lasts for, how severe it is in terms of side effect profile, you know, uh, accessibility of it. Is it uh, well tolerated in humans <laughs> clinically? Like is there even evidence to support its efficacy or is it some experimental research chemical? That kind of stuff. And nothing wrong with research chemicals, by the way. I'm just saying like, you know, some people only want tried and true stuff that has uh, human evidence to support its safety data and blah, blah, blah. So anyways, this is a pretty good one because this is a dutasteride monotherapy before and after, which is not a lot of people use dutasteride, believe it or not. It's like the most effective 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, but a lot of people um, will stick with finasteride. And um, reason being is the total inhibition of DHC can seem a bit daunting to many people because you're literally like with finasteride at most, if you're using like a five milligram proscar per day, you'd be getting like 70% systemic DHT inhibition, but you still have 30 and you still have um, at least some 5-alpha reduction occurring of neurosteroids as well in some capacity. But when you use dutasteride and you inhibit all types of 5-AR as well as inhibit the entirety of the 5-alpha reduction process into DHT to the point where you have like none of the neurosteroids getting produced through that neurosteroid cascade, nor do you have any DHT being produced through testosterone to DHT or the backdoor pathway. I guess it's negligible, but whatever. Anyways, you barely have any DHT. Dutasteride wipes it out like 90 at minimum to 99%. And when I got my blood work done on Dutasteride, um, even on escalating dosages of TRT, titrating up to see kind of if it equated to 99% inhibition, even with a super physiological dose of test, it still inhibited that much. So it wasn't like using a higher dose, like overcomes like the inhibition of the enzyme. It was literally preventing like any DHT from being made essentially in me. I literally had like a castrated women, a castrated like female baby DHT level. Yeah, that's how bad it was um, or how good it was, depending on what outcome you're trying to get to. So this guy, um, he used dutasteride and, um, he had a good before and after. So not sure if this can help people or not, but I've been on dutasteride for about a year now. And I am not sure if I am just the most hyper responder I have ever seen, but I literally have grown all of my hair back. And he said for all, but this was a typo and another message. He said grown, um, as a correction, I am 32 years old. So keep in mind. 32 it's not like this guy is you know a young guy who just had well he's young but i mean he's not like a super young guy who's just like experiencing a crazy recovery because he got on top of it early he started to kind of notice hair loss in his late 20s so he's not aggressive but he's aggressive enough to the point that not a lot of people are going to use dutasteride in their early 30s to be honest most guys are using fin minoxidil nizoral that kind of stuff um, anyway, started kind of noticing hair loss late 20. So like mild aggression in terms of hair loss and then noticed it was getting really bad and eventually just shaved my head. See photos. I decided I would give the pharmaceutical route a shot and got on the dutasteride and the after photos are a little over a year post starting the protocol. So this guy essentially went nuclear off the bat. No finasteride, no minoxidil, no nothing. Dutasteride is about as nuclear as you're going to get with FDA approved pharmaceuticals because it's not even meant for hair loss. Like I guess it's approved in like Korea or some shit for hair loss prevention. But other than that, 
It's not approved anywhere for hair loss prevention. It's used for pro benign prostatic hyperplasia. So it's very, it works very well at what it does. If you are somebody who doesn't otherwise have enough um, scalp testosterone to continue accelerating the process. And it, you know, you get a subsequent spike in scalp testosterone from the DHT being inhibited entirely, which is of note too. That's something to account for if you want to have like a comprehensive protocol is even though you've wiped out all the DHT pretty much, you're still going to have residual androgens there and a subsequent spike in the scalp T, which we're gonna get into shortly. So anyways, he only used dutasteride though. And for wiping out DHT, this is sufficient for a lot of guys for at least a decade or two. Like a lot of guys are going to have like get a decent amount of visual regrowth from like offsetting the continuous miniaturization and allowing, you know, a full length, encouraging the antigen phase and not f***ing with it anymore. And um, they can get a good, like decent amount of density recovery. It's hard to get back dead zones on the temples with 5-alpha alpha reductase inhibitors. But if you're a diffuse thinner, especially, you can notice some significant recovery in a regrowth context just by inhibiting 5-AR. So here is his before. You have to keep in mind, this is at 30, 31 years old here. So this is a decent amount of diffuse thinning. Now, he's parting his hair, it seems like a decent amount, but it's as much as you wanna argue the before and after and be like, oh, he's like going out of his way to make it look worse. It's like, yeah, the, maybe he fucking is, but look, <laughs> the after is so substantial, you could not you know, chalk this up to not substantial results in my opinion. Here's another progress shot. So here's his hair very wet. So, you can only hide so much here when you're taking like a top shot when it's gelled to hell like that. Um, here he is when he shaved his head. And now here's a year after dutasteride. Now his hair is dry here and it's obviously like combed in a way to make it look, uh, you know, layered and good. But you can only do so much, dude. This is what he looks like now. Fully, like, sure. If you look at it from the top, it looks like he has some recession, but dead zones, first of all, his recession was not the main issue. The main issue was this, this diffuse thinning from hell. He, it was so bad that it made him shave his head. And then Dutasheri within a year brought him to this where he has like a sick, what is this? Even a quiff, like a comb over thing. Like I don't even fucking know what you call it, but it looks hella good. And this is like to the point where he considers it like full recovery. And like, obviously some people are gonna look at this angle and be like, oh, look how recessed it is. It's like, realistically, when you look at it from this angle, it's kind of impossible to just see like a straight line. Like nobody's gonna really have that. The amount of recovery he's had is like basically like as good as it's gonna get with a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. At that point, anything above and beyond that is like hair greed that you would need to use like growth stimulants for. Or, you know, inhibit testosterone and stuff like that. Does he need to do that? Probably not for a while. It seems like the amount that he has uh, responded to this, he's probably going to be safe for a good while. The amount of recovery he's had, I would not be surprised if he can hold on to this into his 40s. Maybe at that point, he might have to implement a topical antiandrogen. You know, being proactive, you might want to use some CBO301 in the meantime to block testosterone or RU5841 if you are a bit uh, more daring of an individual and um, don't have the budget for CB and otherwise want something that's stronger, milligram for milligram. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's a, a nuclear FDA approved treatment and a very, very strong response. And this is something that you, I'm surprised more people don't use dutasteride to be honest, that like a lot of people will use finasteride and kind of like, I don't know if they just don't know dutasteride exists or if it's just like, you know, worrisome because they don't want to inhibit it fully. Yeah, probably some of both, to be honest, I bet you it's probably probably a mixture of both in terms of who why they don't do it but anyways it's kind of shocking to me this guy jumped right to do tasseride from the get-go but obviously it worked well for him and presumably side effect free because he seems to be very happy with his progress didn't mention anything else um personally would i recommend jumping into do tasseride monotherapy off the bat no i think that's a bit aggressive off the bat and frankly if you're taking the proactive approach which is what i recommend everyone do you probably shouldn't even need to be popping oral dutasteride in the first place. You can probably get away with a ketoconazole shampoo, finasteride, CBO301 or RU topically, and you have like a pretty like solid comprehensive approach to preventing miniaturization to get, get preventing yourself from getting to a point where you have to play catch up. And if you need to, yeah, microneedling plus minoxidil, like sure, or, uh, you know, latanoprost or another like novel growth agonist or castor oil or um, whatever it is that you deem to be, uh, you know, whatever you want to, uh, 
Everyone has their own risk aversion, obviously. So it kind of depends on what side effects you're willing to potentially deal with or not, or what things you think you can stick to a lifetime of topical applications versus oral ingestion versus whatever. But again, this definitely works. And it's definitely something to consider very seriously if you're somebody who is, uh, has relatively aggressive loss or has otherwise not been proactive enough and is uh, able to stave it off with very uh, like introductory treatments, dutasteride, and, or if you're just somebody who has a significant hair greed, you know, taking the next step to dutasteride might be warranted for some individuals um, or at least worth exploring. I'm not saying you should do it. It just, it definitely is stronger than finasteride. There's no doubt about that. So, and it worked well for this guy. And it's definitely something to consider. And frankly, I see a lot of therapeutic promise in topical dutasteride, which is something that I have talked about before in my past videos. And I should probably do some dedicated videos on, but uh, that might be something that if you're gonna go the dutasteride route, you might wanna look at that first before you start popping oral pills that have a, well, they both are gonna have a half-life of, you know, a, quite a long time, but the topical has some, uh, it's a bit more hit or miss in terms of who gets scalp DHT inhibition disproportionately higher than serum. And just the fact that it occurs in some individuals, I feel like makes it a more novel candidate in terms of, like at least with, with finasteride, when you're comparing topical to oral, on paper, it doesn't really make a lot of sense why one or the other might be superior other than our hypothetical like extrapolations of, you know, when you apply uh, like, scrotally apply like testosterone you can get a disproportionate spike in dht so the opposite should maybe apply if you put on finasteride on your head you get a disproportionate decrease in scalp dht versus serum but even when we look at the studies on it it doesn't seem like there's any kind of benefit of topical over oral and it just seems really annoying to use but with dutasteride it seems a bit different does that come down to the molecular weight i don't know to be honest, like it seems kind of weird that something would have a molecular weight of like slightly over 500 Dalton somehow just all of a sudden <laughs> sits in the exact layer of your scalp that you need it and doesn't penetrate into the blood whatsoever. I think there's more to it than that, but I think it's, and we do see systemic inhibition in some individuals, but in some, not the case. And in some, it seems like you could have, uh, like if you looked into dutasteride mesotherapy, it seems uh, promising as well as just straight up topical therapy. And, um, I uh, definitely think it's worth exploring for a lot of individuals. Um, again, it's topical, but the half-life is so long, it's not as annoying to deal with this finasteride that requires um, more consistent application schedule. So it's definitely something to keep in mind as far as uh, if you're looking at dutasteride, I would uh, implore you to potentially dig into the topical dutasteride um, literature, all but limited or just anecdotal logs before you kind of dive head first into oral. But again, they both they both seem to be promising. Again, an oral definitely does what it's supposed to do. At least when you take it, you know what it's doing. So and it's very predictable with its outcomes. If you haven't seen my dutasteride experiment videos, I highly recommend you check those out for a deep dive into exactly what it's doing. But at the end of the day, basically all you need to know is it's nuking 5AR. And the half-life is multiple weeks. So it's like a very, it's a bit of a, it's a much bigger commitment to do dutasteride than finasteride. At least with finasteride, you can clear it out of your system within a few days. Suicidally inhibited 5AR is gonna come back online. You're gonna restore your DHT le levels within short order. However, with dutasteride, you're looking at months of recovery. So just like literally, it takes a lot more of a thorough thought process and kind of like establishment of what you're willing to take on risk-wise before you hop into dutasteride. So my, despite all of the therapeutic promise of it and how effective it is um, and how convenient it may be, popping a pill just wipes out DHT, you know, most people are going to be better off by doing an introdu introduction to finasteride prior to dutasteride. And even once you get to dutasteride, if you get there or if you even deem it necessary, look at the half-life, consider exactly what it's gonna be doing and are you ready for it? Do you know what to expect? Do you know what it's gonna to do to your blood work? Do you know what the side effect profile could be? Do you know how to recover or what to expect during the recovery process if you encounter side effects? Do you know what it's gonna to do to your testosterone and estrogen levels? Do you know what it's gonna to do to your scalp testosterone levels and how you might have to implement a topical antiandrogen to attenuate that increased androgenicity from the testosterone, which you know might be at, you know something that at a certain threshold induces some level of gene expression above and beyond, you know, some other thing. Like at the end of the day, you need to be prepared for all these variables before you introduce something that has months of clearance time 
built into it is all I'm saying. So I'm trying to not get too off track. I've done a lot of dutasteride videos before. I've done a lot of finasteride vi videos before. I've done a lot of topical anti-androgen videos before. I've done a lot of, just check out my hair loss playlist. This is gonna end up being a 20 plus minute video if I just don't stop rambling. So uh, as well as my blog on moreplatesmoredates.com, my articles are elaborate and uh, broken down into a table of contents with very palatable subsections and hyperlinks to all of the clinical studies I reference if you want to dig into them further for your own personal research. So check that out. And as far as the transformation, I'm happy for this guy. I'm not gonna out him with his name, but um, this is an awesome transformation and always makes me happy to see a fellow brother recover his hair that was otherwise gone. You know, it's like the worst feeling in the world losing it, but it's the best feeling when you get it back, especially if you were far gone, like any kind of recovery, like dude, is a fringe benefit because you want to be proactive and get in front of it. Again, the takeaway from all these videos is be proactive and get in front of it before it gets to the point that you're playing catch up because you don't want to have to depend on a superior response to pharmacology in order to hopefully recover to a strong baseline again. You want to just prevent yourself from getting to that point to begin with because prevention is way f easier than recovery. So you can have a very mild protocol and stave off hair loss for f decades if you just get on it right away is my two cents on it. So take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates. Comments help the algorithm. So drop something down there if you don't mind. It is very much appreciated. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I am associated with in the video description below my TRT clinic, as well as my pharma grade hair loss medications that I use myself. Anything from a pharmacy is pretty much linked down there um, that you can then talk to a doctor about potentially getting prescribed if it is deemed uh, you know, medically necessary for you. Um, as well as check your blood work and assess if you have uh, any imbalances or deficiencies in your hormones that may otherwise warrant addressing and optimizing. And um, if you want to support anything else, Gorilla Mind, Gorilla Mode, anything else I am sponsored by or associated by, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.